my yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch and welcome to Friday Fun Day with Sarah. I've got Maximo here with me. He's modeling our Triangle Granny Pennant Bandana. And today is National Dog Day. And so it's Friday Fun Day and National Dog Day. The day we celebrate all the silly puppies in our lives. And this is Maximo, of course. I'm going to let him go sit in his bed, and I'm going to show you Rosie. Here she is. She's wearing a bandana that's just a little bit bigger. <laughs> and so that's what we're going to do today for National Dog Day. I'm going to show you how to make those fun and simple bandanas. Now, those are made in Mustang High School colors, but you don't have to make them in those colors. I just did it because I love being here in Mustang with my grandkids, and so I thought it would be fun to do those colors. You can use any colors that you want, and you can change colors as often as you want. And the other neat thing about this bandana is you can make it really tiny and make it really big. You can e even make one big enough for yourself. <laughs> well, let's get started. So here are the two bandanas. This is the smallest size that Maximo was wearing, and this is the small size, so it's extra small and small. You can also make it medium, large, and as big as you want to just by increasing around the triangle granny. So if you've never made a triangle granny, here's an opportunity for you to learn. And then I made these sort of floofy pom-poms just by using the same colors. We add a row of single crochet up here and add our ties and it makes a really fun bandana. It's a great way to add any color for photo props. Great for, of course, cheering on your favorite teams. And so I thought it would be really fun to do this today. And I'll explain to you how to make them in bigger sizes as we go. To make some of our triangle pennant bandanas for your dogs or even your cats or any pets, you're just gonna need some acrylic yarn, medium weight number four yarns. Now I used three colors. You can use two, you can do it all in one color. You can make the pom-pom or leave it off. I like it because it kind of goes along with school spirit, which we've been doing with our back-to-school patterns. And so depending on how big you make it, of course, depends on how much yarn you have or will need. And so you can just get in your yarn stash and just come up with some colors that you like. It doesn't have to be school colors, but it is a lot of fun to put a little bandana on your dog to celebrate the favorite team or school colors. So anywhere from, you know, one to two ounces, depending on how big you make your bandanas. We're stitching today with our H hook, 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You need a needle for weaving in ends and you need a pair of scissors. And you need a good pair of scissors because we're going to be making a pom-pom at the end of the video for our bandana. Now this is the extra small and this is the small. The pattern is also written for medium and large, but of course you can continue going around your triangle granny until it's the size that you need for you or your dog, because you could make this into a lovely headscarf as well. We're going to begin with our chain five and join into a circle. Then we'll make that little stay knot so it doesn't come undone. Now, if you would prefer to use the magic circle or another method in order to make your circle, you certainly can. We'll go in, pull up a loop, and chain three. This chain three counts as our first double crochet. We're going to stitch two more double crochets. One, two, and chain one. I know a lot of times when we're making a granny square, we chain two here, but we're just going to chain one. Now we're going to stitch three more double crochets, and you'll also notice that I'm stitching over that tail of yarn. That way we can close up that hole in the center when we're finished. All right, chain one, and then one more set of three double crochets. One, two, 
and three, chain one, and now we're going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch. We're going to slip stitch in those next two double crochets, and then slip stitch in the first chain one space and chain three. And before we go on to row two, we're going to pull that string, tighten that up, and grab our needle. And we're going to go ahead and weave this one in. That way the center of our circle is all closed up nice and neatly. And we just go back and forth going through fibers of the yarn and stitches. Alrighty, now we'll just clip that. And for row one, we have three sets of three double crochets with chain ones in between. Now, if you're going to change colors here, don't do your chain three until after you've changed your colors. I'm going to do my second row in the same color as my row one. So after I joined, I went ahead and chained three. We're going to stitch two more double crochets in this chain one space. chain one and then three double crochets in this chain one space. And chain one. So now we have three double crochets because our chain three counted as one. Chain one and then three double crochets and then we chained one. Now we're going to move over to the chain one space and stitch three double crochets. One, two and three, chain one and three double crochets, one, two and three and chain one. And now we'll go to the last chain one space of this row and repeat that three double crochets chain one and three double crochets. There we go. And chain one. Now we'll join to that chain three. And then we'll slip stitch in these two double crochets and then slip stitch in the chain one space. Now I'm not going to chain three because I'm going to change colors on this row. But for row two, you have three sets of three double crochets, chain one, and three double crochets. And you can already see it's shaped like a triangle. Now if you're not changing colors on this row, go ahead and do your chain three. I'm going to change colors, so I'm cutting off my blue and bringing in this sort of creamy off-white. And now I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Whoops, there we go. And then I'll do this chain one space exactly like we did the previous ones. So my chain three counts as one. I'll stitch two double crochets chain one and three double crochets. And chain one. So on this first corner, our chain three counts as our first and then we stitch two double crochets, chain one and then three double crochets, chain one. This brings us to this chain one space and we're going to stitch three double crochets in that chain one space. And chain one. Now we're going to move over to this corner and we'll stitch it like we did the previous corner. Three double crochets. Chain one and three double crochets. and chain one. Then we'll go to the next one here that's on the side and stitch three double crochets. 
and chain one. Then we'll go to the next corner and stitch the corner the same as we did the other corner or point. We're doing triangles, so I guess they're not corners, but they're points. There we go, tail out of the way. Chain one and then three double crochets in this last chain one space. Our blue yarn's wanting to come back. <laughs> chain one, join to that chain three slip stitch in those two double crochets and slip stitch in the chain one space. All right, now if you're doing the extra small size, you're not going to increase anymore. So the way the sizes work is for the extra small size, you're going to have three rows. For the small size, you'll have four rows. For the medium size, you'll have five rows. And for the large, you'll have six rows. And if you want to make it even bigger, you just continue your rows until it's as large as you would like it. Now I have the extra small and the small made for you. So today, for our demonstration, I'm going to make the medium just so you can see how that will look. And so what we're going to do next is cut our yarn and then we'll be joining in our third color. So I'm changing color, so I'm not going to do my chain three yet. I'm going to bring in my third color. This is our fourth row. If you made the extra small size, you're going to want to skip over to um, row seven, okay? So I'm going to make the corner the same. One, two, three, and then, whoops, I went through the stitch instead of the hole there. There we go. Chain one and three double crochets. One, two, oops, got a little splitty there. There we go and chain one. So now we have two chain one spaces and so we'll stitch three double crochets in each with chain ones in between. So there's three double crochets, chain one, I'll go to the next chain one space, three double crochets, and chain one. And so each row you're going to be increasing by a cluster of three double crochets, chain one. And you can see because we had one here, this row has two, we've chained one and we'll go to that corner and stitch our corner. And that will leave three chain one spaces for the next row on our sides. And that's how the triangle is increased. If you've ever done a regular granny square, it's just like that, only there's only three sides instead of four. All right, so we did the corner, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, and then chain one. And then I'll repeat this on this side as well. So I completed this last side. I joined to my chain three, slip stitched in those two double crochets, slip stitched in the chain one space, and chained three. Now, if this is the size that you want, this is the small size. From here, you'll skip over to row seven, but I'm going to show you how to make the medium size. And so I want one more row around. So I've gone ahead and chained three, and then we'll just repeat what we've been doing. We'll stitch our corner the same.
Then we'll stitch those three double crochets. Chain one, and now we have one, two, three chain one spaces to stitch our three double crochets, chain one. There we go. So there's our three clusters of three double crochet, chain one across, then we chain one, which brings us to our next corner. And the corners are all stitched the same, three double crochets, chain one and three double crochets. and chain one. And so I'll continue to repeat around what I've done here. So I have completed that fifth row. And if you do five rows, it is a medium size. If you want a large, you can do another row. And if you want to make it even bigger, say you like a really big bandana, you have a large dog, like a Great Pyrenees or something, you can continue to make this triangle as big as you want. And the truth is, you could make it big enough to make for yourself just by continue to go around those triangles, row after row, and then finish it off the same way, and you make a nice headscarf for yourself. So I'm not going to continue on anymore. I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarns. I'm finished with my gold, and I'm gonna bring back in my blue. And now what we're going to do for all sizes is finish off. We're going to make the ties and the trim on top. All right, so depending on what size you're making depends on the size of the tie. I do not make these ties real long. I make them long enough for you to tie in a little knot set to your dog's neck size so you can slide it on and off. And I'll show you that at the end of the video as well as that pom-pom. And I do it this way because Dogs have teeth and toenails that can get caught in those ties. And so we don't want a great big bow hanging off our bandana. All right, so if you're making the extra small size after you join, there we go, <laughs> you're going to chain 21 chains. If you're making the small size, you're gonna chain about 26. For the medium, 31 and for the large, 36. If your dog, say, is tiny, but has a big neck like, say, a bulldog, maybe a miniature English bulldog, and you need longer ties, of course, you can adjust that. We're going to be making the first tie on this side. So I've changed colors. I'm making the medium size. So I'm going to chain 31 chains. I've chained 31 chains, and again, you make the tie as long as you need it for your dog. All right, so we're gonna yarn over. We're going to double crochet in the second chain from the hook, and then we'll slip stitch in that same chain. And that just gets us a nice little end. And now we're going to slip stitch in each of those chains, working back up to our bandana one slip stitch in each of those chains. I've slip stitched in each of the chains across. Now I'm going to go in this chain one space and stitch a single crochet. And now we'll stitch one single crochet in each of the double crochets and each of the chain one spaces across the top of our bandana. And I'm choosing to use the blue because that's what I used in the center of my bandana. You didn't have to change colors if you didn't want to. And of course, you can use whatever colors that you like. So we're stitching one single crochet in each 
of the double crochets and in each of the chain one spaces till we reach that next chain one in the corner. All right, so now I'm in the chain one space of the corner and I'm going to repeat over here what I did over here. So the amount of chains you chained here is what you need to chain here. So I chained my 31 chains, I double crocheted in the second chain from the hook and then slip stitched in that same chain and then all the way back up. And that brings us back up here to our row of crochet. And what we're going to do is continue to slip stitch across. So we're stitching one slip stitch in each of the single crochet stitches that we stitched. I slip stitched across. Now we're going to cut our yarn and we're going to bring that loop to the back so it looks nice and neat. There we go. And tie that off to the back of our bandana. The way to know the front, because when you're doing this, it can be front and back and it's a little bit confusing. So where you stitched your slip stitch across makes sort of a little bit of a braid looking there. That is the front of your bandana. All right, so let's turn it over and I'm going to tell you to do something that you should never do in crochet. And that is we're going to tie some knots. We are going to weave it in first, but the reason that I do this is because we're dealing with dogs and you don't want anything to come undone and get caught again in their toenails or their teeth. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab this gold one and I'm going to weave it in. so that it's nice and secure, but I'm not going to cut it off, all right? Now I'm going to grab this blue one, and you'll notice I sort of fray out the ends when I'm weaving. It just makes it easier to get it on your needle. There we go. And so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to weave this blue one in, back and forth through the on the back side, of course, in the stitches. And now I'm going to take those two and tie them into a knot. And I know they tell you you should never have knots in crochet, and I agree. But when it comes to crocheting for animals, it's a little bit different. And I'm not cutting those yet because I have another blue one here. We want everything to be secure and not get caught in toenails and teeth. And I say this a lot, and I know people don't agree with me, but it's okay. I've been known to be a knot rebel. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to knot it with this blue one as well. And I like to do three. One, two, and I give them a good hard pull. And three. All right, so now we're going to cut those three. And this is the front. And I've already done that to where I've also changed my colors in here. And so if you don't want to add any of the pom-poms, you've got a nice bandana for your dog. And remember, you can make this in any size by doing less rows for tiny dogs, more rows for bigger dogs and cats and animals and for yourself. All right, now let's do a pom-pom. So I'm going to do this a super simple way. The first thing you need to do is cut a string of yarn or a strand of yarn that's maybe 10 or 12 inches long. We're gonna set that aside. Then we're gonna take the yarns that we're gonna make our pom-pom out of. We're going to make sort of a small pom-pom and so I'm only gonna use my two fingers and I'm gonna wrap and wrap and wrap until it's as big as I want it. Sometimes we want them thicker, sometimes we don't. All right, then we'll cut it. And if you feel better measuring this and using a template, you can. You can also use a pom-pom maker. We're going to take this strand of yarn. We're going to put it through those loops. And we're going to tie it snugly. I'm going to tie it nice and tight. I'm going to pull my finger there. 
And it's real important you tie this tight because again, we're dealing with puppies and dogs. And if you feel more comfortable not putting this on there, that's okay too. All right, now it's time to trim. This is the container I like to use for cutting my pom-poms because it catches everything. So I'm just gonna put my scissors through and clip. Get, try to get all those loops, shake it out a little bit, and then push it forward. And then we'll just cut across. Don't cut your hand. <laughs> and you can make this as big as you want. You can add more yarn for a thicker pom-pom, but I want it to sort of resemble the pom-poms that the cheerleaders use, and they're usually pretty floofy. All right, I'm gonna cut this one again just to make sure we're nice and even. Get those edges. And yarn just threw, flew across my table. But I like to use this because it catches it all and then I can dump it later. All right, so here is my bandana. Here is my pom-pom. And all you need to do is attach it down here. And what I do is I go through the last double crochet here from the back and pull one of those strings through. Then we'll go in the double crochet on this side and pull the string to the back. And then we'll turn it over and tie a couple knots. And again, if you do not want to put a pom-pom on here, you think it's not safe for your dog or pet, then don't put it on. You have to do what's best for your animal. My dogs don't chew anymore. They don't hardly have any teeth, but they love to wear clothes and bandanas. And so I'll just put the pom-pom on. And of course, this is for a medium-sized dog. Here is the small and here is the extra small, just to give you an idea of size. Maximo and Rosie are taking their morning nap. They always do when I do a video in the morning. So I'm using Princess, my stuffed puppy. <laughs> I just wanna show you the best way to use your bandana. So what I do is I'll lay it on the dog, and of course this one is too big for Princess, and I'll go like this so that I can see how tight to tie it. Make sure you can get your fingers under there, and we'll tie the regular O knot because we don't want this to be long enough to have a big bow tie that their toenails can get caught in. That way you can put it with their dog things and then when you're ready for them to wear it, you can just slide it on. You don't have to take their collar off or anything and just slide it on. Of course, Princess probably should be wearing this one. <laughs> Isn't that just so much fun? Of course, this is little Princess, my stuffed puppy in the extra small size. Rosie wore the small size and Maximo wears the extra small also. He's lower to the ground. <laughs> and then the medium size. And remember, you can make these in any size. Just continue to do your triangle as big as you want, then add the tie. And the truth is, like I said, you can even make one for yourself. Just continue to make it until it's the size you want for maybe for you or a headscarf. Lots of possibilities with this pattern. Well, thank you for being with me for Friday Fun Day and Happy National Dog Day. I've got my Fur Mama shirt on. <laughs> I'll see y'all next week for Friday Fun with Sarah. Bye-bye now.